Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the tour. Today's episode we're going to be talking all about all the houseplants that I have. And in some of them you'll find that they're not really houseplants at all. I like to grow things that are just maybe so tropical that they're essentially a houseplant, but they're not really considered a houseplant. And mostly it's just very tropical fruit trees. And that's, um, you know, that collection is expanding as we go along. So. Let's just look at some plants. All right, so we're gonna start over on this side. I have some things set aside because I have to dig them out. So these two on the left here are for my wife. They're gonna go in her office. The first one here is a Chefalera, which actually has a pretty nice root system. They get pretty a pretty nice root system and generally I would suggest that this pot is actually too narrow I like a wider uh, pot just so you can see the roots a lot better but it's gonna essentially live in this pot forever so <laughs> it'll be fine and then we got a jade same principle um, it's gonna take a little while for it to grow into this pot just because it's a little small right now for the pot but it's, it happens over time it's okay also, shout out to these rocks. This is quartz and basalt. Looks really nice in the light. They help anchor the tree in place. Here are some really big ones. Don't mind my mess over there. This is my little my little supply and you know tool area. So this guy is actually the original to all of my jades that I have. And over the winter, it decided to flop over, essentially, and turn into a cascading jade, which I think is pretty cool. has a very unique look to it. So I definitely encourage it. You know, it's pretty cool. You see a lot of new growth coming off of it. I'm not sure what I want to keep yet off of that or not. Uh, what I want to keep off of that. But I'll make a video about pruning it more than likely. And back here I got one with a really thick trunk on it. These terracotta pots are an amazing way to just thicken up your trunk real fast. So that's something that um, I'll also be talking about. You can see it actually flopped over so that it fell over. The pot was too heavy. That's one of the reasons why the rocks are on there. Um, but it's uh, pulling itself back up straight, so that's all good. I'll have to be doing a little bit of pruning on that as well, because there's a couple of branches that I don't like, like this branch right there. Probably pruning it off because it's growing in towards the center of the tree, which I don't like. All right, so moving on. First, we got this pretty big. Angel wing begonia that my coworker got me. Really cool. A friend as well. Really nice. I didn't even know I wanted it until he showed me and they just look amazing. Look. Red right underneath. Forgot the exact variety right now. But it's a really nice one. For here we got a pot that's just way too much stuff growing in it. It's got way too much stuff growing in it. Uh, there's like the pothos right here. We got an English ivy that's in there. There's a peace lily that's always flowering in there. There's a uh, yeah, back. There's a diphenbachia or a dumb cane in there, and also kind of buried. <laughs> buried in there is also a croton. I do like them. It puts on new growth. It doesn't get the most amount of color because it doesn't get the most amount of light. It needs a lot of light to get all that color in the leaves. So it does need a better spot. It, it just needs to be up potted, getting a better spot. So I'll probably end up making a video about that as well. Okay. Back here is one of my first plants that I've ever gotten, which is a an arrowhead vine, which is also called a Syngonium podophyllum. If I'm pronouncing that right. It's probably about... It's kind of tucked away in there. 
but it's kind of it's probably about five years old i've been doing this for like five or six years now so five or six years old right here we got a big leaf chef valera it's a relatively new addition again in terracotta i i love terracotta it just wicks wax is moisture it just does a really great job for anything that doesn't want to be moist all the time so yeah see a new leaf coming in and then i just actually that they hadn't even noticed that before there's another new another new leaf on top of the new leaf coming in already as well so that's awesome and i got like i said quite a few jades because they're just really easy to propagate and grow pretty thick trunk on that guy and then i got a triple trunk back there and then actually a double trunk it's gonna be a little harder to show you that there we go a uh, double trunk right there in the back as well i could use bigger pots because the pots that are in are honestly too small but i'll do that one day here we got an orchid pretty sad little orchid to be honest uh i'm not the greatest at growing orchids um, but this one has sentimental value so we definitely want to you know, I, I'm doing my best to keep it alive. Back here we got another pothos that I'm growing for my stepdaughter. And then we have another arrowhead vine in the back there for her as well. There's a, a little pot of succulents. Needs a little bit of time filling out, but it's okay. It'll fill out over time. Here is one of the fruit trees that I'm actually talking about. I put this outside early spring. It was getting to be about 45 degrees uh, Fahrenheit at night, which is about 70 degrees Celsius. Seven degrees Celsius. Um, and it lost all of its leaves. <laughs> so that was a learning lesson. Um, so I won't be doing that again. It's probably just going to stay indoors forever because it just the fluctuating temperatures is a problem for it. Um, especially when it gets that cool, which is not that cool for me, but it's too cool for a very tropical uh, fruit tree, which is a jackfruit. This is a jackfruit tree. Hello, car. And um, it's putting on new growth now. It's doing really well, but it did lose every single leaf. And that's, you know, it really didn't set it back too terribly far, but not something I, I want to have happen again, you know, so... Then right here, another great example of something that is kind of crazy and unusual. These two are star fruits, star fruit seedlings. Now, I generally can't get them to go beyond this point for some reason. I don't know what it is, but they stay this size. They get about the about to be this size and then they die. So I don't know. I just keep trying. We'll see. Over here we got a ficus microcarpa, which I grew every single one of them from cuttings, including a little bit of forest in there. You can see there's probably about five in there. No, nope. and then there's another. I'm trying to bonsai it a little bit. You can see it has a pretty decent trunk on it, but they're they're all from this one. Pull it up. They're all from this little bonsai, was, which was actually meant for my, uh, my sister-in-law, but she didn't have enough light in her, in her place, so I ended up giving it back, so it wouldn't die. But, yeah, every single one of my ficuses, is that the right, right term, ficuses, is coming from that one bonsai. Here we have a Thanksgiving cactus. It's um, it's white with a pink center. Really neat. It's very beautiful. And then I got another one from from my sister-in-law. Right there as a cutting. It's doing really well. It's uh, I believe red, but I haven't seen the flower yet. I think this year will probably be the first year it'll flower. Back over here, same girl worker that got me that jackfruit and that angel wing begonia. Also got me this rubber tree right here. We kind of like the 
barter <laughs> for these things although he would give it to me you know, like free of charge and i would give him stuff but as well but you know it's nice to get new stuff that he didn't have before so back over here is a chef Valera, another one i grew them from cuttings they're all from you can actually probably still see the cut point right there that was the um, the cut point where i took the other one off it was in that blue pot comes out of it came out of there okay and then we got Norfolk Island Pines over here. This one actually isn't doing so hot. You can see, you can tell. Um, I keep them in here because they. I'm kind of hoping it'll just bounce back. Um, I unpotted it and the roots were just terrible. They were all gnarled up together. Um, it was kind of like, there were like three or four in one pot. But they were just so bad. I, I had to cut a lot of roots off. So one of them did survive for sure. This one, it's had a lot of... Oh, it's had a lot of new growth on it. It's doing well. And then the other three in there. A little shaky. But we just keep misting them. Or I just keep misting them. Um, and yeah, just keep hoping they're doing okay. Keep hoping that they'll bounce back. Back here is a Lucky Bamboo that I've had for ages as well. Also not doing so hot, but I'm also not really looking at it after it very well. It needs to be watered a lot, and I don't. So it just kind of sits there. It, the water just drains through so quickly that it's hard to keep it up, keep up, keep up on it. I just have to soak it in a bucket and just let it suck up all the water off of it. All right. So last little area in the plant room here is this. These are all um, Monstera cuttings that I got from a stepmother-in-law. Really cool. I'll show you the big one that I grew off of this here in a minute. Just some cuttings from ficus, it's not, nothing too crazy. More jades, because you just get so many jades so easily. And then this is just pot of nothing. I just want to put uh, grow some uh, beneficial mites in that. And then this is just some seedlings that I'm really not paying attention to much at all. So this is where I have a lot of my succulent and cacti, or at least the smaller ones. Fit very well on this shelf over here. So the first one is a, a Worthia. Has two little pups coming off of it. Doing very well. The next one here is a Sedum, I believe. Not exactly sure on the variety. But I do believe it's a Sedum. And it sends out these flower spikes. Pretty neat, but they're not crazy showy, to be honest. Then, up here is a... <laughs> my cat mowing. Pink Pixie Cactus. It's look very showy. It flowers all summer long. Very reliably. Looks very good. Looking very well. Then over here is a, I believe it's a variety of a peperomia. Um, my sister-in-law's boyfriend got a cutting for me. It's just a, a little segment. And in about a year and a couple of months, it grew out to be this size. So it grew very, very quickly. Mao. And also, there is a, I believe, is a flower bud. Pretty sure. Just noticed this. Um, that's a flower bud. It's not very showy yet. <laughs> but we'll see. Looks pretty neat. Be cool if it flowered already. That would be really quick. Be awesome. But yeah, I do like it a lot. It's uh, nice and viney. Looks good. All right, so then we have a dragon fruit right here. A coworker and friend got me this. This little section right here was how big the cutting was. And that little top part there that's gotten pretty thick there. That's new. And also the side branch also new so I would say it's doing very well also then we have I believe is another variety of a Worthia over here 
I do believe it's a different one because the spots aren't quite the same as the other one. But either way, doing very good. Budget pups off of it. I'll have to take one of the pups off and put it in a terracotta pot because that's my wife. She got it for Christmas for her Christmas party with her coworkers and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Doing well. Um, then another one that's a bit of a mystery to me. Maybe you guys in the comment section can let me know what some of these varieties are. I just got this as a little leaf, much like you actually can see in the pot right now. As you can see, there's quite a few more in there, but that's how I got it. So I'm not actually sure what it is. Um, also, I might in future take down that top because it's, it stands up okay on its own, but it's not the greatest. And it's of course because it's pretty top heavy. And I feel like if I were to chop it down a little bit, at least at least some of it, it would sprout new branches pretty readily. You can already see some new branches down below here. Um, I'm actually kind of a fan of succulents getting a long um, stem on them. Like, I don't mind that. Some people don't like that. I don't mind it so much as long as they get woody and they do get uh, pretty strong. Otherwise, if they just flop over all the time, then obviously it's not the greatest thing. Also, as you can see, it gets plenty of light. So, yeah. We'll see. Anyway, pretty nice. All right, so here's our cat's little garden. Need some grass, just finished it all. Hello. Yeah, need some grass, but she has a, some rosemary in there and some catnip. Then right here, I have a big Woo, ficus mycocarpa. I grew this from the, the same cutting, that bonsai. It got to be this tall in about a year's time. Pretty quick. As you can tell, probably, it does need a little bit of pruning. Which I'll show you how to do that. Or how I do it. And back here I've got Majestic Palm. We put it over here because it wasn't getting enough light in the spot that it was at. You can see some of the brown tips. That's from um, lack of water. Could also be humidity as well. But it'll do a lot better in here. You can tell. It needs, that's mostly from light. Lack of light. So we'll sort that out. Then over here is the main area where I have... The vast majority of our majestic palms. Um, we actually have them here because <laughs> in this barrier right here, which looks very nice. <laughs> we'll figure out a better way to do that at some point. But we're trying to prevent her from getting up to that ledge over there. So that's why these majestic palms are here. Overall, they're doing good. I could definitely stand the water in more, but they're putting on new new growth and. Overall doing pretty well. This one was also getting shaded out though. So me taking out that one palm will um, give it all a lot more light. Just allow them all to do a lot better. The overall doing pretty good. Pretty happy with it. I don't mind the brown tip here or there. I think people freak out a little bit too much about that. It's not a big deal as long as the overall health is fine. All right, so here is our big money tree. It's pretty tall. I would say, mm, it's maybe like a 1.2 meters, about four foot-ish. Terracotta again. Doing well. Got it last year? Yeah, doing well. Lots of new growth on it. I think pretty important for these guys is to just let them dry out in between waterings. If you overwater these, um, the trunks just rot and yeah, not much you can do about it once that happens. So, yeah. Okay, I've got another one right over here, which is super tall. It's about as tall as I am, which is 6'3", 6'4". Go ahead. Pretty tall. Send out a whole bunch of um, 
branches down lower, which I actually kind of like it. I feel like, you know, makes them a little bit more bushy, which I don't mind just a tall, slender tree. But if, I feel like in this case, it looks pretty good. So I'll leave it. Okay, then I got a pothos right here. I believe this is a golden pothos. You can't really tell the golden too much because it really doesn't get enough light here. Um, this is the north side, so it just is what it is. Still looks good, but you can see some of the golden in there. One of these days it'll get a better spot. And then on the other side here, I have a parlor palm. It's doing really well. It's putting out a bunch of new growth. Doesn't mind the lower light that it gets here. Definitely think it would grow even faster if it was put in um, like bright indirect light, but because most things will just do a lot better with that. But still does really well. Hey, so sure. You're curious, huh? She's the culprit that eats some of these leaves sometimes, as you can tell right there. But ever since we gave her grass, she doesn't do it nearly as much, so it does really help. And that doesn't really hurt her either. Pearl palms aren't toxic to cats. Then right here, we have a big Boston fern. Uh, this was a division from my stepmother-in-law's uh, friend, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. But it was somebody that was pretty close to her. She got a division from it. And she decided to give us one half of it. And it's just doing really well. So these tops, they were actually over, hanging over the edge of the pot here. And I decided to flip them over, be on the top again, and um, allow them to root in again. Over time, that'll happen. You can tell there's new growth popping out everywhere, so I know it'll be fine. But it just, they really hang on, these little roots, it's just hang on by a thread, and I just didn't like that. I wanted to make sure that they really just had a better anchor point than that. So over time, they'll anchor themselves back in. They've been in this pot for, this one has been in this pot for about three years, something like that. So quite a while, really. But it's doing really well. Um, I'll talk about soil later, but you really don't have to repot your plants very often if you can keep it looking good. She is extremely curious. <laughs> She's always following me around. Yeah. All right, so then I have another one that's down here. And this one actually took a while to get established. It didn't, it, it took a while to get used to the different humidity and the different light levels and everything. Um, but now that it has, it's just sending out new, um, new growth like crazy. So really doing well. And that's in the same pot exactly as the other, as the big one here. So I'm sure that in no time, it's gonna be about that size. In which case, I'll have to get another stand for it. But yeah, very nice. Also, one thing I didn't mention in the garden tour outside, so I might as well add in real quick, is that those, <laughs> those are all my pine berries. Lots and lots. Definitely no shortage of that. All right. And then right here, I have my huge <laughs> Monstera, which I grew from one of the cuttings that you see in the plant room. They get pretty big, pretty quick. Just sends off new leaves like crazy. Sending off a whole bunch of aerial, aerial roots right there, which I'm actually guiding them into the soil so they kind of become an extra anchor point, I find that to be pretty beneficial. See them all over the place. Right there. Pretty neat. Ordinarily they would grip onto the tree as they're climbing up a tree. So, I um, maybe at one point I'll give it a moss pole. But I really don't mind the way it looks to be honest still holds itself upright pretty well, especially with the aerial roots. 
All right, everyone. That was part two. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. I'll have another video out very soon. Tot de volgende keer.